Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, with another uh, webinar of 50 minutes learning sessions with Rocky. Uh, this is Ahmad Haknagahdar, and today I'll be happy to go over some of the customization uh, availability and capabilities uh, that are ready to use for the customers of Rocky. Uh, first, let's uh, discuss why we need customization. Uh, customization is very important for any simulation tools because the user need to provide state-of-the-art models and they need to be able to develop these type of models. So the first important capability provided by customization is that it will allow you to develop a custom model. For example, in the uh, DEM simulations, it will be such as creating kind of contact and joint force models for your simulation. In addition, uh, customization allow you to save by automating the processes such as pre-processing and post-processing your simulation. For example, if you have a simulation that you want to do a set of post-processing on it, you can automate that through API or customization. Uh, and then also uh, through the custom, uh, customization, you can add user interfaces uh, to your models uh, so that any part that you want to create a sub user interface for your model, for your uh, users, for your uh, application user at your company, you can create these interfaces uh, to let them interact with even the the models that you create for Rocky. So uh, talking about the Rocky API, API stands for Application Programming Interface. And uh, in Rocky, we provide two set of tools for customization. First one is Application API, what we call them API Prepost, which will give you high level access to Rocky data structure. Uh, and then you can modify the pre-processing and post-processing steps of your simulation. And then the second tool is API Solver, which lets you uh, communicate with the core solver of Rocky, be able to implement new models, uh, which ultimately it allows you to extend existing models that are available in the default implementation of Rocky. It will let you create a new model or if you want to export or interact with the data that are already calculated inside Rocky, you can access these values uh, and modify them or export them. If you look at the complete workflow of a simulation, we have pre-processing on the left side where we set up the uh, definition, parameters, um, the type of models that need to be used. And then we have simulation where the calculation is being done. And then at the end, we have post-processing where you analyze the results. Uh, the API pre-post is written through Python language, and it allows you to interact with the pre-processing and post-processing, the two boxes on the left and the right side of the window. And then the API solver uh, is written through C++ language, and it gives you access to detailed data and the type of model that are implemented in Rocky so you can modify or create your new models for your simulation to be executed at runtime at the time of uh, calculations in the simulation. Let's look at the example for API prepost, which is used to automating the workflow. Uh, the way it's designed uh, for each object Let's see like what objects are inside uh, a DEM simulation. For example, particle. Uh, you have a set of methods and functions to do the pre-processing through Python language. For example, you can set density for the material of this particle. You can set the shape to be used for the calculation. You can set the particle size distribution for uh, this particle. These are part of the pre-process. And also, when you complete the simulation during post-processing, you have access to the data similar to what you see on the GUI uh, for analyzing the data. For example, you can access the properties of this particle. 
what is the velocity, what is the residence time, and so on. You can uh, get the statistical measures, what is the maximum, minimum standard deviation, and so on for all the particles at each time. And you can also uh, create a new custom uh, user processes, similar to what you see in the uh, graphical user interface of Broadview. For example, you can create a subdomains. Uh, you can filter the particles based on a set of properties and so on. All these processes can be automated through Python scripts. So let's look at examples of more detail for pre-processing uh, in Rocky. What we have uh, is very intuitive and it's very comparable to what you see with the GUI. Like first, uh, this is under what you see on the left side is the data panel of Rocky. You have a study under study. There are different elements of the simulation that need to be defined to uh, set up the case. So if you want to access the same type of information through API pre-post, uh, pre then first we need to get access to a study, save the object of a study, and then uh, if you want to access, for example, physics, we can, under that study, we can use a method called getPhysics uh, to save the physics object. And then from there also, uh, if you want to access the particle collection, you can access that information and also individual particles of the simulation, uh, we can access them. This is very similar to what you see on the data hierarchy on the left side. Uh, from study, then we got the particle collection, and then from particle collection, we got uh, each of the particle groups. Now that we have the particle, uh, we can go more in detail of setting the properties of it. Uh, here, just the code snippet that you have study is stored as an object. Then uh, up to like line 115, we have the particle store. And then on the particle, we can start setting the parameters, uh, same as what we see in the user interface. For example, we can define what is the name of the particle, what is the shape to be used for the calculation? What is the type of material? Uh, or what is even the uh, size type? And even more than that, like we can set the particle size distribution and so on. So as you can see, it gives you a full control of individual parts of uh, setting up the cases through API. And when the simulation is done, you can access the information through post-processing. Uh, for example, here there is an example code for accessing the curves of geometry after running the simulation. Uh, we get the geometry, we get the study, and then we get a collection of all geometry parts. From there, we get we select one of the geometry based on the name of it. And then from there, we can access the curves of that geometry by providing the name. The name is very similar to what you see in the Rocky GUI. Like by providing the name, you can access the data. Here, what I'm accessing through the method get y, I just get the y axis of the curve, which, uh, which is the value, and the x axis is time. So just having that value over time uh, and uh, also saving, let's say, the uh, time in a different array, then I can manipulate this data, I can analyze it further, uh, and finally put these together with other data from the simulation to create my final uh, post-processing and analysis. This is uh, all done through Python uh, languages, which is very intuitive, high level, and you can compare it with what you see in the GUI. In addition to uh, what we saw to do the pre-processing and post-processing, you can as well create a user interface for these steps. For example, uh, we saw an example that uh, we could do the pre-processing steps. But what we can do here is that we add a user interface for the user to define what is the value that you want to be assigned for this pre-processing. And that's how we can create a complete wizard uh, basically create a small app 
inside Rocky that uh, that will be used for the application that uh, you're working on. For the application that you always need to modify a parameter, you can create a user interface and have it stored as an app in Rocky and every time use this app to quickly set up the cases and post-process the results. Now let's look at the Solver API. What are the capabilities that the Solver API provides uh, by having access to the uh, core solver of Rocky? Uh, some of the highlights of the feature that the API solver in Rocky present. First, uh, it lets you create a user experience, a user interface for your models. Uh, uh, so whenever you create a new module, then you can add a set of user interfaces very similar to what you see for the default models of Rocky for your module that you're going to create. Uh, you can ha you have access to create most of the typical user interfaces like checkbox, numeric box, as you can see uh, on the left side of the bin. Second uh, highlight of the API solver is that you have one single code which can be executed on CPU processors, multi-CPU cores, and also can be run on GPU and multi-GPU. You do not need to worry about parallelizing your code. Rocky will handle this part, uh, and you just need to write the code in C++ language once, and then Rocky will distribute it on GPU to CUDA language. In addition, the code, uh, can, the same code can be compiled across different uh, operating systems, for example, Windows or Linux. Uh, so you just have one code and you compile it for different uh, environments and it can be used for different processing units. And lastly, the performance that the model you create through Solver API, uh, they have the same performance as uh, the native and the default models in Rocky. There is no uh, degradation either on the memory consumption or the execution time of these models if you create them through the Solver API. They will be treated like the default models of Rocky. Looking at the capabilities that are uh, available for users to create uh, through the Solver API, this is a typical loop of discrete element method models. We have a particle generation, force calculation, and then if there is any breakage, after that, if there is any motions from the boundaries, then we solve the equation of motion and predict the motion of the particle. We do this loop and then uh, output the data. And now in red, what I show is that the capabilities you can add through the solver API. You can create an input, you can add a scalar to your particles to be stored on the particles and be transferred throughout the simulation. You can add a new contact force model. Uh, in addition, you can uh, add additional body forces to the, these particles, which will let you do a customization of the CFD coupling, computational fluid dynamics, be customized how it interacts with the particles. And recently, we have the customization capability for SPH models. So those SPH models and interaction with particles can be completely customized. Then we have the breakage, which can be customized if there is any heat or mass transfer or between the phases, you can modify that and customize it. There is any boundary motion can be customized. So you can have a customized motion in the simulation. And also if there's a wear, wear on the geometries. Uh, lastly, during the motion of the particle, you can adjust the joint uh, force models that will be used for the more component particles. And through the whole hierarchy that you see here, the whole structure, you can modify every single part of the simulation work. You can either add a new model or modify the existing models. This was it. I hope uh, I was able to give you a general idea of what customization and API in Rocky can provide.
this year we had uh, a couple of 15 minute sessions to go over the demo cases of Rocky. I hope this was helpful. We have one more coming on November 16th. Uh, so we'll be very happy to have you on the next uh, Rocky 15 minutes. Thank you so much.